One cold evening, Thomas, Turby and Percy were resting in the branch line sheds after a hard day's work. The wind blew heavily that night. It made a ghostly sort of howl as it rattled through the pipes across the shed. Oh, uh, moaned Percy in a ghostly voice. Make sure the ghost doesn't get you, Thomas, he said, mockingly remembering the time. Thomas thought he was a ghost after an accident with a cart of lime at a level crossing. Toby chuckled quietly, for he had also been in on the joke. But Thomas seethed crossly. Shut up, he snapped. I knew it was you. I just felt sorry for you and made you think your childish prank succeeded. The engines began to talk about the recent paranormal events which had occurred on the main line. First the ghostly figure of a woman in Henry's tunnel, then James's encounter with the spirit of an old war department engine, and now Bear's encounter with the ghost of a Vatican workman. I certainly hate to come face to face with a ghost myself, said Toby. I know Thomas wouldn't, said Percy, bursting into laughter. Thomas went red in the face. He was determined to pay Percy out. Thomas was still cross the next day as he collected Annie and Clabber from the carriage shed. They could tell Thomas wasn't in a good mood. What could be wrong? What could be wrong? They twittered nervously to each other. going on and on about something that happened years ago, he sulked. The ghost incident? asked the driver. Exactly. Someone ought to trim his wheels for him, replied Thomas crossly. Throughout the remainder of the journey, the crew had come up with a plan. And at the end of the day, when they took Thomas to the water tower, they told him all about it. The only way to put a stop to Percy's teasing is to give him a fright, said the driver. Thomas looked confused. Yes, but how will we go about it? he asked. The fireman, who had just climbed down from one of Thomas's side tanks, smiled broadly. My great-grandfather worked on the railway as a station porter at the time. The railway was made up of several smaller companies. Back then, this branch line was known as the Tidmouth, Knapford and Ellsbridge Railway. It was operated by a single engine. He was a hard worker. But as time went on, the line was merged with the other railway companies to become the North Western Railway. Management decided that the branch line wasn't necessary, and it was closed, and the engine was scrapped. But the engine wasn't ready to accept his fate. And on many occasions, many workmen, porters, and station staff have reported a ghostly sight of a locomotive puffing down from the quarry to the good sidings at Farquhar. Thomas stood silently as the fireman completed his story. I'm sure that will make Percy's frames quiver, chuckled Thomas as he puffed away to the shed. That night, he told Percy the story. The little green engine was amazed. But how come we never seen a ghost engine from the quarry? He asked. 
Feynman says the ghost only appears on the anniversary of its scrapping. As Thomas and Toby had drifted off to sleep, Percy stayed wide awake, thinking about Thomas's story. The next day, the branch line was busy as usual. Thomas, Daisy and Turby took passengers while Percy was rostered to yard shunting. Earlier that morning, Thomas and his crew carried out the second stage of their plan. They spoke to Percy's crew and the station staff and signalmen about what they had in mind and they all agreed to go along with it. Later that afternoon an inspector came to speak to Percy's driver. There is a late order slate that needs to be delivered to the harbour near the junction, said the inspector. Percy will have to collect the trucks from the quarry tonight. Percy's smile soon turned to an expression of worry and almost fear. The plan was that after Thomas's final passenger train he would go to the quarry and hide in sidings and as Percy would leave he would give a ghostly blast of his whistle frightening the little green saddle tank engine. It was dark by the time Percy set off for the quarry. The heavy winds began to pick up once again. Percy shivered as the wind howled around his funnel. It's just a story, it's just a story, he counseled himself as he neared the quarry. When he arrived, everything was quiet. The truck stood on a line, ready for Percy to take away. Suddenly, as he was being coupled to the train, he heard the sound of steam hissing from an engine cylinder. It is there anyone there? stuttered Percy. And then the trucks beside Percy were bumped and moved forward as if they were being shunted. Please can we go now? Percy asked his driver and so they set off down the line to the harbour near the junction. When they arrived, Percy, still in a state of fright, shunted his trucks into a siding. and then he puffed back to the station as Thomas arrived with Annie and Clarabelle. He was surprised to see the look on Percy's face. Percy! You look like you've seen a ghost, said Thomas. Soon, Percy's crew spoke to Thomas's driver and fireman. Well done. I think that will put an end to Percy's teasing. Percy shot a glare at Thomas. You did this to pay me back for my teasing, he exclaimed. Thomas was confused. Well... That's what we planned, but I was delayed at the big station, said Thomas. Then, who was at the quarry mysteriously shunting those trucks? Percy asked. It couldn't have been me. Toby and I weren't rostered tonight. Thomas paused for a minute. You don't think that... The two engines went silent, and for a long time afterwards, there was nothing said on the subject ghosts.